Humans are catarrhine primates, and like any other catarrhine primate, there are several anatomical features that distinguish them from platyrrhine primates. Platyrrhine primates being, of course, the South American monkeys. So humans are part of the old world clade of, of monkeys and apes, so Caterini. And I just want to tell you in this video a few of these distinguishing features that uh, separate catarrhines from platyrrhines. And so I'm going to start with something that's not really obvious unless you're really looking for it. Um, and that is the pattern of bony articulations in the orbital wall. So there's the orbit right there. That's the lateral part of the orbital wall. And the rest of this area is the fossa where our muscles, some of our chewing muscles will originate, temporalis in particular. And what I want to draw your attention to is this suture right here. This separates the frontal bone from the sphenoid bone. And because these two bones are touching each other, that means another pair of bones, namely the zygomatic, often called the jugal, it's the same bone, which is right here. It forms that anterior part of the, of the cheek bone that went along with the scomosal. And that suture here is not touching the parietal, right? And when we look at a platyrrhine, we'll see it's the opposite. Um, but in a catarrhine, what you have then, again, is frontal bone articulating with the sphenoid. So that's true in all old world monkeys and apes. Another feature that distinguishes catarrhines from platyrrhines, and humans are a good example of that, has to do with the uh, dental formula. And this particular skull is missing several teeth, as, as you see. But it does exhibit the, if we, you'll have to take my word for the um, alveoli here. Well, you don't have to take my word for it. I'll, I'll just show you. The alveoli, or the sockets for the teeth, will tell you where the teeth are. So what you're looking at here is that, uh, that's the chin here we have. Let's see now if I can zoom in on it a little bit. Here we have sockets for the two incisors. And then here we have a socket for the canine, a bit bigger. And then posterior to the canine in each quadrant, so um, this is one of the four dental quadrants, of course, you have two premolars, one, two. Both of these are replaced, as are the canines and the incisors. And then behind that last premolar, then you have one, two, three lower molars. So that's the wisdom tooth. That is, none of these molars are replaced. So that's the M3, M2, M1. And the key feature distinguishing catarrhines from platyrrhines is that catarrhines have two premolars, not three. OK, so the third feature that this human skull helps us to um, visualize here is the anatomy of the external auditory meatus. Basically, that's the, the bony entrance to your middle ear. And if you look at the skull ventrally, note that it comprises a bit of a tube here. I mean, the larger the animal gets, the harder it is to notice this. But once we look at a, a platyrrhine, I hope you'll see what I mean. So that's this tube comprising the, um, uh, the, the entrance to the middle ear, whereas in a platyrrhine, it's just a ring. So speaking of platyrrhines, let me then switch. This is a mesh of a marmoset, Calithrix yacus, and I can use it now to show you these same features in platyrrhines as opposed to what you just saw in a catarrhine, namely a human. The first feature to, to consider here is the external auditory meatus and the fact that that comprises a ring. You, you really don't have this tube-like structure leading towards the bulla um, as in contrast to what you just saw in a human as an example of a, of a catarrhine. Rather, in platyrrhines, you, you get this ring. And I might mention that um, catarrhines are born with a structure that resembles this ring. It's only during mostly postnatal development that you get the uh, external auditory meatus tube that forms. Um, but in platyrrhines, it, it stays a ring throughout, throughout their existence. The other difference that uh, exists between a catarrhine and a platyrrhine concerns the premolar number. 
here it looks at first glance like you have two premolars and three molars, but in fact, these, uh, all three of these teeth have deciduous precursors, and that is one of the definitions of an antimolar. And so this particular species, as is common among the marmosets and tamarins, only has two molars, and all three of these are replaced premolars, and that, of course, is the canine, and here we have uh, two incisors in each quadrant. So three premolars in the platyrines rather than two in cadrines. And then this mesh um, nicely shows the suture between the zygomatic bone, also known as the jugal, and the parietal. So a zygomatic parietal suture right here, and the fact that those two bones are connecting means that the frontal and the sphenoid here are not. And if you remember in our old world monkey and our ape, our catarine, it was the uh, sphenoid and frontal that were connecting uh, and pinching off the zygomatic and parietal, but here we have a platyrine, and so it's, it's the opposite. Zygomatic, parietal, connect so that frontal and sphenoid do not.